Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabori here, and I'm doing a movie review this week, and it's a classic, the original 1987 film, Robocop. Yeah, the crime-fighting robotic machine has begun to serve its justice. And it's still one of the best movies I've ever seen. It's awesome, it's exciting, and it's worth watching many times, more than once. This was the film that I actually grew up watching as a kid. And considering how ultra-violent this movie is, this was still one of the best films I've ever seen. It became so popular that they spawned sequels, as well as the TV series, the animated series, and of course TV movies as well. It spawned a lot of merchandising towards this movie. This was the film that was enough to give it an X rating. Yep, there was an X rating that existed back in the 80s, long before the NC-17 rating, which started in 1990. Because as violent as this movie is, there are a lot of explicit scenes. It was enough for this film to give it a hard X because this movie would never have been released to theaters if it had to be this situation. So yeah. So apparently uh, director Paul Ben Holman decided to, uh, to release a theatrical version of the same film by cutting out half of the violence that's in the film. Mostly the, uh, the hard edge violence including the that famous scene with um, Alex Breen blown off. Yeah, Alex Murphy. Yeah, long before he became this hero. That scene alone was enough to give it an X rating. Well, anyway, I got to see the director's cut version on TV later on, which was taken from the Criterion Collection. It's a very rare DVD, and it had the a very rare aspect ratio which the director had preferred since this movie got released uh, unfortunately this new blu-ray that I just got right here in my hand since this is the unrated director's cut version tons of extras by the way as you can tell <laughs> yeah you can see all the extras right there and, and you gotta love the cover right there of Robocop in fact, that's the same cover they use in the previous Blu-ray and the 20th anniversary DVD edition. Yeah. Unfortunately, this is the only Blu-ray along with the other one not to feature the theatrical version. So I agree, that's a shame. Because this would have been the best one to have with both versions intact. Because I would have loved to have two versions of the same film as a result. But, you know, I can live with that. Maybe someday when I get a chance, I'll probably find the theatrical version. But I'm glad I have this because I heard the this movie was restored in 4K and definitely looks amazing. A lot better than before. I mean, the aspect ratio had stayed the same, although they might have had some more detail into it. Probably look a lot better than I thought. But hopefully someday they might find a better alternative behind that. But you know what? But I'm going to keep it that way. I love this movie. And this is the best I can ever do. But this was a classic. And of course we now have the 2014 remake of this movie. Which is such a shame because I heard this film. To my superior was awful. Kind of like the Total Recall remake we had two years ago. Yeah. Remember how bad that one is? That explains it. Yeah, it seems like they just want to remake uh, Paul Ben Hoban movies nowadays. And I've had the feeling that if this is going to keep up, they're going to might as well remake movies like Showgirls, Basic Instinct, and even worse, Starship Troopers. Yeah. What will Hollywood ever learn? But you know what? I would get a kick out of Showgirls if they ever did a remake. Maybe they'll get it right this time. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm, 
I'm sort of fantasizing how <laughs> how crazy that film really is, but at least it has all the sex scenes that you want to see. Uh, you get the idea. But anyway, the movie stars Peter Weller, you know, the same actor from the movie The Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai. Very great movie, by the way, back in the 80s. Along with Nancy Allen from Carrie, as well as Dressed to Kill and... Movies like Blowout with John Travolta, of course, you know, since they both were in a movie together, you know, Carrie, the original Carrie, that is. Along with um, Kurt Ward Smith from the TV show That 70s Show. Yeah, he later went on to do that show. He was also in another TV show that aired on Fox called The New Adventures of Bean Baxter. Yeah, it was a very short lived show. Yeah, it's so hard to find these days on the internet, but I definitely remembered it when I was a little kid. It came out around the time that this movie did. So yeah, <laughs> but he's very good. Also, uh, Ray Rice from the movie uh, Swamp Thing and the TV show Alien Nation. Yeah, he's very good. And Miguel Ferrer. And it's, of course, directed by Paul Benhoven. He not only direct this movie, but also direct the films like Total Recall, Showgirls, Basic Instinct, and Starship Troopers. So, let's get right to it. The movie begins set in the futuristic Detroit, Michigan, also known as Old Detroit. A corporation known as the OCP, Omni Consumers Product, had decided to announce that they're going to about to purchase the Detroit Police Department after going on strike. Meanwhile, the Metro South to the West police officer, Alex Murphy, who's played by Peter Weller, has been transferred to the police department and decided to work with a female partner named Ann Lewis, who's played by Nancy Allen. And they team up together to track down a group of thugs led by a criminal mastermind, Clarence Bob Dicker was played by Kurt Ward Smith. Unfortunately though, after they tried to arrest him, Murphy was actually being blasted off by Clarence along with the game, which causes him to get killed. So apparently he's been taken to a local hospital and suddenly one of the OCP employees by the name of Bob Morton, played by Miguel Ferrer, decided to take Murphy's corpse and transforms him into a robotic crime fighting machine known as Robocop. And it was enough to compete against another employee, Dick Jones's Ed 209, which, yep, a huge robot which was sadly malfunction after giving a, a test on, on how it works until the employee got blasted off violently yeah and that was probably one of the funniest scenes in the movie despite of how tragic it was well after Murphy became Robocop he discovers all of his memories when he was human he remember that he has a wife and kid and they were living in an old house that was a very nice place and he decided to find and arrest Clarence Bob Dicker yet the killer who actually killed him who's now realizing that he's actually working for Dick Jones. So while Robocop is about to arrest all the criminals out there in Detroit, yeah, he, his goal was he, he must stop Clarence and Dick Jones from, from coming up with one of the biggest plans that's ever going to disgrace the city. And that's basically what the movie was all about. And I really enjoy this movie a lot, even as a kid. And I still do today. Because this movie, not only does this film have a heart, but it has a story that goes right through it. Lots of, a lot of political messages that was going through the entire story. And a lot of, you know, a lot of crazy satire that they were using in the movie. Like, it's starting to play out like you're actually watching this on TV. It's like you're watching a news report and you've seen all these fake commercials that they threw in, like like that Nukem you know, game board that they came up with. Yeah, sort of like a 
a parody of Battleship. Yeah, I thought that was pretty fun to see that. And um, there was a lot of great scenes in this movie. Um, you know, powerful bad guys. You know, I thought uh, Kurt Russell Smith was one of the best bad guys that he ever played. You know, Clarence Bob Dicker. Yeah, he's definitely you know a scene stealing you know role that <laughs> you never thought you would believe. Yeah, and they had a lot of great characters in this movie. Uh, Dick Jones, of course, is even worse as the, uh, the, the who's the competitor trying to go after you know Bob Morton's uh, plans. But this movie was just amazing. It, it was ahead of its time. Uh, the Ed 209 was uh, was a complete um, experience to <laughs> to see. Because back then, they actually did use a lot of stop-motion movements you know, instead of using all that CGI technology that they were using. But um, what's also more amazing about this film was that it almost predicts uh, everything that's actually happening in Detroit um, as of recently. Yeah, because you already heard the story about Detroit being bankrupt. Yep, that's true. It's actually happening already. I hope they don't end up taking the turn from Robocop because I would imagine, you know, the OCP being the one of the biggest corporations to take over Detroit because who would have thought? <laughs> exactly. And I'm going to tell you this though, it's a whole lot better than the remake that just came out. Uh, I don't care what anybody says. This is a movie that didn't deserve to be remade at all. That's why it's totally unnecessary. Um, that's why I felt the same way with Total Recall, you know, being remade, and guess how that turned out? It was awful. Yeah, they need to stop doing that. But the point is, though, I think it's one of the best movies that they, they ever have done, had ever written, and it was powerfully directed by Paul Van Hoven, because he was the man to do this film. And it gives this movie any justice it deserves. The sequels, on the other hand, are not as good as the original. Not even the second movie, either. Because while the second movie had a lot of problems, at least it was a decent sequel, enough to have what was going on in the movie. And that's why they had that. Uh, the third movie, on the other hand, I gotta tell you this, was awful. It was terrible. It was not the right choice to have this, but apparently it was rushed into it. Unfortunately, that film was part of uh, Orion's uh, bankruptcy problems, so this movie was never released until 1993. So yeah, that turned out to be uh, a disaster. I'll give you a hint. Why would you want to see a Robocop movie where he actually flies in the air? I don't. They shouldn't do that. It doesn't make any sense. Well, then again, the movie had tons of problems. Other than the fact that they gave it its PG-13 rating. Yeah, th this is a new thing for the movie. Um, the movie was a joke. Um, I mean, now they replaced uh, Peter Weller with uh, another actor. I guess that makes sense because Peter Weller was doing a film called Naked Lunch. So that's why he couldn't do Robocop 3. But then again, you know, it was getting worse. So that's what was going on. So Robert John Burke yeah, replaced him. Who we went on to do another film called Thinner. Yeah, the one with Joe Mantegna. Um, that was a good film, by the way. Yeah, I, I thought he was very good wearing that fat suit. Yeah, because he looked like a fat man. Yeah. But this movie is a classic. It should never be touched. Should never even be remade at all. I say, if you ever get a chance, though, definitely watch the original film. It's better to having to sit through a good action film than having to sit through a boring one. And that's how this movie really is. So anyway, I give Robocop five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.